Well, the S&P 500 is on a historic run. It is up 14 of the last 15 weeks. The last time we saw that kind of momentum was 1972. And here we are. We crossed about 5,000 for the first time in history. And at least for now, the market seems content to hang out there. But as that chart, though, moves up and to the right, there are some that are concerned about cracks forming under the surface. And one of them is in this chart, that the percent of S&P 500 companies trading above the 200 day moving average has actually been moving lower. So as the market moves higher, it's on the back of a fewer and fewer stocks. Well, broadly, stocks are actually slipping and trading below uh, their 200 day moving average. I'd like to bring in now James Callahan, portfolio manager at Barometer Capital. Thanks so much for joining me, James. Thank you, Amber. You know concentration. It's just it's the thing that troubles everybody about this market rally. How much does it really trouble you? Not at all. Uh, <laughs> Perfect. We, we feel like we're in the right places. We've been fully invested for a number of months now. And uh, yeah, it's just a matter of owning the right stocks. Um, I, I think investors really have to struggle to find some cracks forming in the rally. The one you've just highlighted one, which is a, a slight contraction in breadth, something that we monitor carefully. Another one would be put call ratio on the S&P. It's come down substantially. It's still a, a good distance from extreme readings, which would suggest a, a blow off top. Um, I do think overall the level of sentiment uh, is quite bullish here. Generalized anxiety is, is maybe a bit high. I think people who missed the rally are wondering, should they throw in the towel and, and buy now? And people who've caught the rally are wondering to do it, what, wondering to do, uh, what they should do with their gains. Um, fortunately, we're in the latter camp. Okay, so what would you say to those in the former camp? Is this a good place and time to be allocating fresh capital? It is. I mean, I think you need to take a long-term view. Uh, we look out over the over the next year and we see increased likelihood of easing financial conditions, which should lead to multiple expansion in the U.S. market, especially. Um, so we're positive. We talk a lot about the regional banks um, and not in the same way that we talked about it in March of last mm -hmm. year. It does seem to be a ring fenced issue for now. Um, how do you assess that, whether it's a canary in the coal mine or whether it truly is, OK, these select areas are having trouble with their real estate exposure, but that's the extent of it. Yeah, I, I think it's tough to draw a message from the price action of, of New York Community Bank this morning. Uh, what we would look at is high yield financial sector credit spreads, mm. and they're totally benign. They've barely budged at all, which suggests that U.S. regional banks have ample access to credit and, and that this is a non-issue. So that brings me to, you know, areas to win. We're back to, you know, the single most um, important factor for outperformance has been momentum. Dividend yield is way back <laughs> down to uh, underperforming. Are you following those momentum players higher? So we, we go on a position by position basis. Over the last few months, our portfolios have taken a momentum tilt just because that's where the leadership is. Uh, in some of our strategies, we do still like good dividend growers and, and there's still plenty that you're able to find in, in the US and Canada now. What's but, an example? Give us one. Uh, a lot of the financials. So we, we've leaned heavily into the Canadian banks to an extent uh, in the last few months and they've done pretty well um, in our income strategies. but. M more so the focus has been in, in momentum plays. And uh, in those Canadian banks, are you willing to kind of stick that out? Because there has been that bounce, right, from, from the October lows. Um, did you mean to kind of catch a short-term uh, pop there? Or do you think that these are good long-term buys? No, our, our view in taking those positions was that the, the charts had consolidated quite nicely. They yeah. made a good turn. So w we're in it for the longer haul. Um, the dividend growth profiles are great. Capital return is fantastic. And in our income strategies, they're, they're generally a good fit. So the U.S. has the Magnificent Seven. We have Shopify, which is set to report uh, tomorrow. Is this one that you own? It is. And what do you like there? So we've owned it for some time. I think we took this position in, in uh, late October, so it's worked well for us. Um, I think we, we've seen this so far in, in high-flying growth technology companies in the U.S. and Canada. Expectations are very high into their earnings reports yeah. today. We've seen Monday.com as well this morning, I think, is a similar case. So for Shopify specifically, option markets pricing, and I think about an 11% move. So it is one that investors will need to buckle up for. But we like what we've seen so far. Third-party data and channel checks that we've done suggest good intra-quarter data. If you look at Amazon as a read-through to the North American uh, consumer and retail market, it's, it's pretty strong. So we feel good. When you are uh, talking shop about your investments, the chief complaint about Shopify is 
valuation. Um, how do you really think about that? Because valuation is not a perfect tool, right? It doesn't often tell you what's going to have expensive stocks and get more expensive, cheap stocks and get more cheap. Exactly. And, and so you're exactly right. I think no matter how you slice it, Shopify is a very expensive stock. I think one way to look at it would be there's a scarcity of growth, that specific type of growth in Canada. So Shopify probably should trade a lot more expensive than mm. peers in the U.S. I mean, even peers in the U.S. trade very expensive because there's just in the last couple of years, there's been a shortage of this type of growth. So we don't really have an issue with the valuation. The growth is strong and it seems durable. They've right sized their cost structure. So we like it. James. 